This is the geologic map. What we have are the line symbols, and they are dashed where inferred and dotted where concealed. Where we have a fault, it can be a solid line, which means we're sure of it, a dashed line, which means we're pretty, we're pretty close, and a dotted line means uh, we're not really sure. The ball and bar shows that side of the fault has been down dropped. This type of normal movement is denoted by this particular by this particular symbol. We have in this quadrangle growth faults and we have strike slip movement which is a more complex movement along a dip slip fault. So this symbol shows a dip slip fault, this shows a strike slip fault and where we have some strike slip and some dip slip movement and that's called oblique slip we'll put both symbols on the map. Since we have the glacial boundary that lies halfway into this quadrangle, we've denoted it with this particular symbol and we sort of made it up, but it shows something uh, special on the geologic map. And then the line of cross-section, A to A prime. If you have a very complex area and you do several cross-sections, you usually use A to A prime, B to B prime, and go through the alphabet that way. This shows the scale of the map. This map is a 1 to 24,000 scale which means that one inch equals 2,000 feet. From here to here is one inch. From here to here is one inch. So one inch equals 2,000 feet. It shows our contour interval, which is 20 feet. So each topographic line means that we've gone up or down by 20 feet in elevation. The dark lines are index contours at 300 feet, 400 feet, 500 feet, 600 feet. And in between them, there are four lighter colored lines and those are in between so that will be 520, 540, 560, 580 and the 600 line will be bold again. Here's our north arrow. It shows that magnetic north is one degree off of true north so that's one thing we take into account when we use our compasses out in this area. That means that we have to adjust our compasses by one degree to get the correct readings. Quadrangle maps, uh, we have these very nice figures that show the adjoining quadrangles. So if you want to know, let's say, what's happening on the west side of the Pomona Quad, you'll look at map 4, the Gorham Quad. So the green quad is the one that is shown here, that's the Pomona Quad. Next to it, to the west, is the Gorham Quad. So that's an easy way to reference adjoining maps that show geology um, that connects to this quadrangle. And it also shows the area in the state of Illinois that this map is and it's in Jackson County um, in the southwestern part of the state of Illinois. This area on the map up by the title shows who has done the work on the map. I get to put my name on it and John Nelson helped me out and so did Joe DeVera. We made the map in 2007 so that's that's the part that makes me the most proud is that I get to put my name on this map and people get to ask me questions about it. If you want to get into more detail, you come to the second page of the map and you look at the graphic column. It shows the formation, the Tradewater Formation, the Caseyville Formation, the Kincaid, and the Dagonia, which we pointed out on the geologic map, and any more specific members within those formations. So coal seams, marine zones, sandstone bluffs that are very prominent in the area, we also show the thickness of those units. They can range from 0 to 50, 0 to 120, and the 0 means that it's absent in some places. The upper number is the maximum thickness that we've observed in the area. And then we put a letter that corresponds with each particular section of the column. So A, B, we go all the way down to M here. We have our unit descriptions. A, which is the top 20 feet, sandstone, coal, and claystone, and we describe the lithology of all of the rocks in the area. Cross section on the second page of the map. So we show the direction, so southwest, the elevation above the surface, and we also get into the elevations um, below sea level. So this spans about 1,600 feet in height and goes about seven miles in length. We show the formations dipping toward the northeast, and then we cross the Pomona Fault, which has a reverse movement on it. We see fault drag of the rocks into the fault, and as they flatten out toward the northeast, they're still dipping slightly. We get some scouring down of the Caseyville. We show the scale here of the cross-section. The horizontal scale is 1 inch equals 2,000 feet, which is the same scale 
as the geologic map, but the vertical scale is exaggerated by four times. So one inch equals 500. And oftentimes it's helpful to vertically exaggerate the cross section so that you can fit the geological units in there. Sometimes they're too thin to show at the map scale. Below, we show the formations that we have depicted here in the cross section from the quaternary sediments, which are the surficial sediments, all the way down to the Mississippi and Chesterian units. This is the text of the map. It's not always necessary to uh, write text for a map, but what it does is it explains things about the geology in the area that may not be depicted on the geologic map or that need more explanation. So the Pennsylvanian stratigraphy is something that was important to describe completely in the text, so that's where I did that. The introduction is usually the area and the location relative to other fault zones, um, other states, any specific details about the bedrock, maybe the regional dip of the bedrock, any large faults in the area. Here I also describe the structural geology, so the faults, the way they trend, and the ages of the faulting. Uh, another important part of the text is the economic geology. So here we have coal in the area, and so that's, of course, of economic value, oil and natural gas. Um, I acknowledge people who have helped us or agencies such as the USGS. The most important part of the map is the references. Those are other publications which we have used to make the map, and that's where we give credit to people who have done work in the area, and we've used their results. After about a year of walking the ravines, putting pencil on the paper, crunching numbers, drawing lines, and coloring with colored pencils. The map is finally complete, and I have something that I'm pretty darn proud of and had a pretty fun time doing. And that's why I chose field geology, and I'll keep doing it for a while until there are no more ravines to walk, which I don't think that'll ever happen. There's plenty of land in Illinois to cover, so we'll be mapping for a while. Thanks for watching.